just do a bit of a tune. Well, try to do a bit of a tune. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, one, two, two, two. Hey, hey, hey. Today I'm working out of a cow shed on the east coast of New Zealand. Um, this cow shed is a decommissioned farm and it's where cows used to come every morning uh, for milking, by hand of course, and then again in the afternoon. My wife's grandfather and his brother laid this foundation in 1949, so it's now fourth generational. And my wife's father went out and found all these recycled materials that you can see around the outside of the structure and he's turned it into a batch which is it basically means a holiday house so this is now a place where our families come and congregate together and we uh you know the kids run around outside and they play um we make good food we tell stories we drink some wine and most importantly we make music here um, but the music we make has generally been acoustic music so we'll take a few out of tune guitars and after a few wines we'll play them um, today I want to set myself another challenge. Uh, I've got this new Simon Phillips Studio Drums from Steinberg and it's an add-on sound set for Groove Agent SE4 and Groove Agent. Um, so Groove Agent SE4 comes inside of Cubase. So if you've got Groove Agent SE4 you just need to purchase the additional content pack. For those of you who don't know who Simon Phillips is, he's an extraordinary drummer. and He's played with Zappa, Jagger, Jeff Beck, Toto, there's a staggering list of people that he's collaborated with and played with. Um, the interesting thing for me about this sound set is he's also an engineer. So he's not only created the grooves here, um, he's recorded them in his very own studio. So what we've got here is a guy that lives and breathes studio session playing. Um, and he not only lives and breathes it, he knows how to record his drum kit. So it's a pretty interesting scenario. Um, I've got a piece of hardware here. I've got the Steinberg CI2 Plus just a set of headphones. And over here, because I was traveling from Australia, I couldn't bring a microphone stand with me. So this is made out of a safety cone, something you'd find on the road. I've got a piece of plumbing here. So this is just, I guess, something to, to join another um, bit of pipe onto. I've got a stick, and on the top of that, I've just stuck my cradle. And on the top, I've got my favorite Neumann U87. Um, which is from Hansa Studios in Berlin. So I've got a bit of everything. It's quite a multicultural setup we've got going here. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can compose a song using the essence of Simon Phillips over here in this little country batch in New Zealand. Um, let's give it a go. Okay, so I'm using Groove Agent SE4. Um, a lot of people will have Groove Agent and it works inside of Groove Agent. The reason I want to use Groove Agent SE4 is because anyone that has a recent version of Cubase will have this. So they'll have the ability to purchase this add on pack and straight away start using it inside of uh, the software that they purchased. Okay, the first thing I noticed is that there's a lot more parameters than there used to be, and there's also a lot more kit pieces. I think I read that there's something like 27 kit pieces that he's recorded. So let's have a look down the bottom. I've selected the pad. I go over to the room and overhead. That was always there. So you can control how direct the sound is. That's interesting actually. Have a listen to this as I turn the resonance up. Wow, you can actually hear the snare resonating and the rest of the kit resonating there in the background. So that's the first thing that's different. That's quite unique. As I bring the room up, and overhead up, you can see the sounds widening. I'm liking this already, and this is just really the kick drum. We can tune it. I'm guessing that's more like where it should be. But I'm a big fan of detuning kit pieces, especially kit drums. And we've got the envelope here, so we can change the attack, the hold, decay. If we want a loose sound, we could just drop the attack back. Um, but this is where it's starting, to, it's starting to really get interesting for me, because over here we've got a room and an overhead menu. And then down the bottom here, we've got another menu. So kick, 
So you can see through this room mic, we can detune the kick drum. Can change the envelope again. That's pretty cool. And then if we go to the overhead, we can also detune the overhead. So that means that if we go back to the kick sound, we can tune it here, and we can go to the room, we can tune it here, and we can also tune it here. One of the neat things is this trigger. So I've got kick and if I, if I move to the right, we've got a trigger menu. Now it'd be very rare for any studio recording in this contemporary age, not to have any kind of, I guess, sound blending or sound replacement. And um, this is a really neat way of being able to blend pre-existing samples into a particular instrument inside of the kit. So for instance, let's take the kick. Let's open this up. I think there's around 30 different triggers that we can use to blend using the level. Let's move this up. That's nice, resonance. Add some punch over the top. Let's drop that back and blend it and it's still pretty good. These are all adding texture and substance to my kick drum, which really helps the kick drum stand out in the mix. Another really cool thing over here is the ability not just to tune the actual acoustic drum, but the ability to tune the trigger. Really nice. And also bring the attack up. So there you go. That's punch straight over the top of the kick drum. Wow. This is cool. This is amazing. It's one of the most important things about this plugin is that it comes with loads of different style patterns and MIDI patterns that Simon Phillips himself has recorded. Uh, so we just need to move over to the pattern bank, that's over here, from the instrument bank, and I can hit play and click on these different grooves. It's pretty cool. So you can start to build a whole piece of music, I guess. So there's the intro. Different types of intros. See this complexity slider will allow us to change be between a more simple groove and complex groove. Really is quite neat. And as we drop it down, the intensity lowers. So that's basically the velocity that he's using to hit the drum with. All of these patterns are interchangeable. If I listen to this and think, well, you know, I want something that's a little less complex. I only need to come over to the style library and I've got loads of different patterns that I can use. So I just go through, find something that works. It's pretty cool. So these are different types of fills on each style. Move the complexity around. It's great. And then when I find a pattern that I like, it's easy. I just drag and drop it straight over into my track. I can drag another one straight over afterwards. And I can start to create a whole lot of different grooves. So this is really the exciting bit. Um, we've discussed how you use the plugin, but how do we actually use it on a track? Um, so first of all, I've created a whole lot of different grooves out of my main window. Now these grooves are the Simon Phillip patterns, and I've found the patterns that I like and I've simply dragged and dropped them over. And now I'm using these patterns to trigger Groove Agent SE4 from my project window. So you can see that all being played out here and the MIDI information's been sent back to Groove Agent SE4. I've also started composing a track using the chord pad down the bottom. I've set up a group of chords that I think I like, 
and I drag and drop them over onto the pad window, just like that. And now I've gone up to Neo Soul Keys and I've dragged and dropped a few different chords up onto the Neo Soul Keys pad. And now I've got this nice little progression. Okay, so that works. The other thing I needed was some bass. So I went to my media bay and I found a bass loop that I really liked. Be one of these and I dragged and dropped it over and this is how the bass sounds in the track. Now the interesting thing about the bass is that I have got chord track triggering it. So basically if I come up here and change a chord at any point in time, all of the data in my track will change. So I'm not locked into any specific chord progression, which is the really cool thing about composing this way. It means that I can go and change a groove if I don't like it, or if I think I could use something different. And it also means I can just simply click up here and change the key of my whole entire song. It's a really neat way of composing music and everything out my project window changes. You can actually see down the bottom here, as I click on A, it changes the MIDI data inside of the track. That's so cool. Moving on with the track. Got a nice little pad in the background there. So got this going on in the chorus. Just got it turned down nice and low there. Cool. I've also got some claps for a different section, just all adding color to the track. The next thing is really to come up with some lyrics and see if I can come up with a vocal line that's going to work over the top of this track. It's all pretty much experimental, uh, but that's what making music's about. So I'm gonna get a pad and a pen and see if I can write some lyrics. Um, and then sing through my amazing microphone stand here. City lights have fade The ocean's clear and naked I left your troubles with your people Who love complicated things Don't you wait up late I'm not buying This is home and this is simple This is how we're meant to be There's no fighting over here There's no need for us to fear It's just a crazy game we play Love this goal I'm really impressed by what I've managed to achieve in just a few hours here in this small batch, um, using just a few, I guess, important ingredients 
first and foremost of course the microphone but then we've based all of this on the Simon Phillips studio drum set inside of Groove Agent SE4 and then I've just used stock standard Cubase instruments to, to fill the track up. The standout for me in this whole entire drum set is the ability to detune uh, different components of this kit through different microphones. That's something I personally haven't come across before and that for me means that I can blend the tone of each individual component into the final mix. And this has implications not just for singer-songwriters like myself sitting in a, a small batch in the middle of New Zealand, but this is a serious studio tool. Um, we're blending and replacing sounds constantly in recorded drums. And the flexibility, the ability just to start blending a trigger in to a particular component of the drum kit is really quite amazing. I'm really impressed. The city lights have faded